Good morning, everybody. Thank you for inviting me. You still have more hair in that picture. That's <laughs> absolutely true. Thank you to, you know, go deep in my Facebook and look <laughs> all the things. Well, first of all, thank you, Miriam, and all the team of my time starting to invite me. It's a real honor to know a little bit more about the Toronto innovation ecosystems. And also, my idea is to share with you what we're doing right now and working with the Pacific Alliance, which is like the trending topic of the, you know, Latin American countries that are working together. And it's a trending topic because we are doing a lot of good things. Uh, some of them are ongoing, some of them has to be designed, but all, all others are, you know, already being implemented. And it's very good to, you know, have this possibility to share what we are doing right now. So, uh, it's going to be absolutely the easy way to scale in Latin America. Uh, probably in where some things are really doing very well, that others that there are a challenge. So, first of all, what I want to, uh, to tell you is, okay, what is this thing about the Pacific Alliance? I mean, we should know a little bit more about uh, the, these two countries. Um, well, first of all, it's, uh, it's an initi initiative, I'm sorry, uh, of regional integration with Mexico, Colombia, Chile, and Peru. There are a, a lot of other countries that want to be you know, in and together, but it is still an association between false countries yet. Um, it was officially established in, in 2011. Um, if you see the market, and this is why it is so very good to scale in the Pacific Alliance, it's more or less 260 million persons. Uh, and have an average per capita of GDP about more or less USD, uh, almost ten thousand dollars. So it's a huge market. If you take the four countries together, that is uh, the most important thing. Of course, Mexico is the bigger market in the four countries, but if by itself, it's not as competitive as you take the four the four countries and the four market. And the four countries as well is the eighth economy power and the eighth export force worldwide. So there is a lot of things very huge in the Pacific Alliance, but we want to use that power and you know focus that on innovation, and that is the thing that I would like to share with you today, because this is public policy it's on the field with a lot of you know challenges yet, but it's on the field, and that's it's very you know all of you are entrepreneurs and you know that the fields give you the more and the most relevant information. Uh, there's also another very important thing about the Pacific Alliance. You have observer states, which means there are almost 50 countries, or probably more, you know, uh, and there are different economies. Most of them are innovation-driven uh, economies, I mean, the developed countries, that they want to know, Canada is one of those countries, that they want to know, okay, what is this thing about the Pacific Alliance, and is this going to work? And if it's work, where is it going to work in which specific things? And, it, and that is very relevant for us because that means that we can connect all entrepreneurs and innovators with other markets, with other things, with other you know, institutions that are wanting to see how the things are going in Latin America. Uh, countries like, like I said, like Canada, United States, uh, other Central American countries like Guatemala, probably Salvador, and Ecuador, Argentina, um, etc., Switzerland, you know, you have many different economies. And not, not all of them participate in the same way. Some of them are more proactive, yeah, that's 100% true. But they want to know, you know, what can you do. Actually, Israel is one of the most active countries and they, you know, want to do things with the Pacific Alliance all the time. Uh, oops. But of course we have some challenges and we have some strengths. And the strength is that, you know, it's a common language. Well, with exception in Latin America with Brazil, but Brazil is not part of the Pacific Alliance. Actually, the Pacific Alliance the idea is to compete with Brazil. But anyway, you know, that's obvious that Brazil is so big, you know, that we have to have something to, to compete with. But it's a common language, you know, all those hablamos español, so that is very, very relevant thing. The second thing is the geographical proximity. You can take a flight from Bogotá, being Santiago de Chile in the capital hours. So that is very important in terms of doing business in the Pacific Alliance. Uh, third of all, it's a cultural affinity. Most of you know, the countries share this cultural thing, so we can understand each other in a very easy way. Similar social and economical challenges. 
And values and common history. I mean, we are not on the countries, you know, develop. We want to be, and to do the things in a better way. So we have things to share. But there are some challenges, of course, and there are very big challenges that we still have to solve. One of them is regulations. I mean, if you want to connect four countries, okay, we have a lot of issues for regulations. Who's going to hold the money? Can you send money to one country to the other? If you are an annual investor, can I just go to your country and do an investment? Uh, how much is going to be the taxes in that country? So, probably those things, we're working on it, but those things can be, you know, complicated and, you know. The second thing is uh, internationalization, sorry, capacity. I mean, we have to look globally. We have to look the world. If you want to be a successful entrepreneur, and everybody knows this, you have to, you know, find something and a solution that can be applied around the world, or at least in a huge market. And the Pacific Alliance is that. First of all, consistency in political cycles. We have governors of four years, five years. So they take one year, you know, to come in, and they say, okay, this is the minister of this, this is the minister of that, and then the second year, you start to do things, Third year, you have a second year to do things, and the fourth year, you are saying, okay, goodbye. So it's very short governments, and you have to do all the work uh, up, uh, again to go and convince the ministers, the people who work in the innovation agencies. So that takes a lot of time, and you have to start over and over again after four years. And that is obviously not very good for a public policy for innovation. Uh, institutionality, that means that we need to have uh, probably more and better institutions with the capacities to take innovation and, you know, move it. We have some very good institutions that are doing a lot of things in Chile, Peru, Colombia, and Mexico, but we still need, need to, we need to still, you know, be much better. And the last one that is marking in red, it's uh, something that I see when you talk with the entrepreneurs. Uh, what is, it's not everybody, of course, but it's confidence and attitude for innovation. It's a mindset that is not yet quite spread in society in Latin America and in the poor countries of the Pacific Alliance. We have people who want to, you know, go and embrace the world with their innovations, but there are others that they still think, okay, but I'm uh, from this country of Latin America, I'm not very sure I'm going to be able. Let me tell you something. Yes, you are completely capable to take those things and you're successfully innovative. The market is going to tell you that, not me, of course. The market is going to tell you, okay, if you are good enough, we're going to use what you develop. But that mindset, we still have to, you know, push it more, which I think is very relevant. Okay, and the big question is, why you, you know, entrepreneurs are in other countries of Latin America, of, and of the Pacific Alliance, or probably here in Toronto, in the US, should see the Pacific Alliance as your next opportunity to go into Latin America. First of all, because all these countries are they're trying to take the big leap, and the big leap is to be developed countries and, and you know, transform in the best innovation ecosystem of Latin America. That is the mindset, and a lot of people that are working on this, people from the private, private sector and public sector, has this in mind. The second, and this is the most relevant thing, this is the focus of all the innovation activities. It's a common innovation ecosystem. We already know that Chile, Colombia, Mexico, and Peru has good things to share, but we want to go, you know, further. We want to build a common innovation ecosystem. It's like probably some of you are citizens of the European Union and have a passport of the European Union. Myself, I'm a Greek, I'm Chilean as well. So I can move in the European Union as a European. So you have one, one passport. And you can go to another country, to work, travel, have a job, etc. Imagine the same thing for innovators in the Pacific Alliance. Moving from one country to another, we, that is the idea, with just a couple of phone calls, and to, you know, be, try to use the market that you have next to your country. And, I'm sorry, and of course, these four things is a better opportunity than just one market. And why we have to do this? Because we need to increase the speed of the innovation ecosystem. So if you want to have more opportunities, this speed has to you know, increase. And when that happens, and what is the relevance? Because we need more adequate and sufficient human capital. 
people more prepared to deal with innovators, entrepreneurs in different levels. Uh, adequate infrastructure. I mean, in general, that is a very good thing in the country, but we need better. Uh, good business environment. I mean, I want to do business in a country that is easy, that is something that people want to do. And uh, we have to, you know, be part of economies driven by innovation and knowledge. And that is not, of course, the main focus of these four countries, because we are not 100% developed yet. Okay? So what we are doing very specifically, and this is a chair uh, job, a chair uh, work, I'm sorry, of the public, of the technical group, technical, I'm sorry, innovation group of the Pacific Alliance, which is people from the different governments and innovation agencies from Mexico, from Peru, from Colombia, and Chile, and with the support, economical and technical, of the Inter-American Government Bank. Uh, so we design a public private innovation agenda for the Pacific Alliance. Some of these initiatives are working. Um, and the idea is to build a common innovation story. I mean, we, we just need to go further. The four countries have to have their own chapter of innovation. And that is what it, you know, becomes this uh, agenda. So the agenda has different activities. Some of them are ongoing, and the others are not started yet, but it's going to start in a couple of months. So first of all, we create a, an angel investor network, and we call it Angels AP, or Angeles AP in Spanish, which is going to be like uh, networks of networks of investors who want to see the Pacific Alliance, so, you know, a place that you put your money in, in different projects. We're going to work in Pro-funding initiatives, uh, for example, Colombia still has some regulations issues related with crowdfunding. So if an entrepreneur wants to you have you know, money for these things and you have regulation issues, you have to you know, take care of those things. We are setting up and designing the first step of a network of innovation agencies, like the experience of Ureka in, in Europe. I mean, if you want to have like better pub, uh, business, uh, public policies and innovation, you need to put the innovation agencies to working together, sharing visions, sharing things, sharing probably money, infrastructure, you know, other <coughs> things. As well, we are working on the Accelera AP, which is the network of business accelerators. Uh, the main idea is to stop money. I'm going to talk about you know later in this thing. Cultural mindset, which is uh, okay. We need to tell everybody that you know being an entrepreneur and innovator is something that you can do. It's something that we want in our society. Uh, we need more public innovation labs. Uh, in some way, there's a, in Chile, there's a, a Laboratorio de Gobierno, which is a, an institution that is, you know, seeing innovation, uh, public innovation, and the public problems uh, to, uh, to bring the private initiatives to solve public problems. And we're trying to, not just to take the Chilean case, other cases that we can set up, set up a network and work on that. Public problems. Public private commission for regulations, that is the way to you know take care of all these regulation things. Activities of tech transfer and uh, corporate innovation as well, which is very relevant. So the agenda has a lot of things. Like I said, some of them are ongoing on and other kind of about to start. So let me talk about a little bit about the business related network, also they are AP. Uh, the main focus of this initiative is four things. First of all, soft landing. We what if you are an entrepreneur from Colombia and you want to move to Mexico? Okay, where are you going to stay? Are you, where are you going to work? Who's going to help you? Who's going to help you with technical support, which is the other thing? Who's going to help you with network? I have no idea how to do business in Mexico. I mean, and the cultural things that probably are not good in my country, I, mean, you know, I probably, you know, I have to figure out a lot of things if you're going to move to a country. It's not just to go and do some, some tourism of, uh, in, uh, of special interest if to go and do business, to really go and prepare your business model to the next level. So for that you need networks, and of course, there's a very relevant part too of this uh, accelerator network, it's more business between the accelerators, and that is something that we want to, you know, boost because we think it's very, very relevant. Uh, we have some uh, accelerators that are the, the, the first, um, you know, participants in this network. It's uh, actually the next Monday in Chile we are having a workshop with a lot of 
of people from business innovators and also for the angel investing network and the private, sorry, public sector. So we are going to have, you know, the first agreements to start operate the network, and we hope to see the false entrepreneur, you know, moving in the second semester of this year. What about the angel investor network, which is other of the ongoing things that in this innovation agenda, or angel AP? The main focus is obviously more investment possibilities between these angel investors, technical support, a lot of things that we don't know, and the angel investors need more information to become one. Yeah, probably I have money. Um, the money that I use is for go for infrastructure, but sometimes investor thinks you know go for infrastructure is the same thing to put your money in a stock. Let me tell you, and you probably already know this, that is nothing like that. I mean, 100% risky is absolutely different. You have to deal with different people with crazy ideas that has, is very different than have an apartment or have, you know, condos. It's very different. So it's technical support, you know, to have better prepared uh, investors. Increased financing possibilities for entrepreneurs, of course. Public innovation agencies has a lot of uh, money in for entrepreneurs, but we need you know different uh, financial opportunities, and as well like the Accelera AP, more business between angel investors. I think this is very relevant, and if they see opportunity with each other to share this opportunity, we're going to have obviously more business. Uh, these are the funded members, and like I said, on this uh, next uh, Monday in Santiago de Chile, we're going to have a workshop to work with them. This is just the first group. It doesn't mean that we are not going to have others, of course, but we need to start with someone, and this is the first part of this uh, group. And this is other of the initiatives that is uh, ongoing, and we are designing the first part of uh, a public innovation agency network that we have called the Innova AP. We still have a lot of work to do, but it's a very interesting initiative that it's uh, led by Impulsa in Colombia, INADEM in Mexico, Innovate in Peru, and Corfo in Chile. So the main idea here is why don't we put these four innovation agencies to work together to improve the innovation ecosystem of the Pacific Alliance in a lot of things, because they are doing many things in their countries. So let's go to another level and to share public policies, for example, good practices, which is very relevant among the innovation agencies, Financial instruments, that is, obviously, they have, I mean, if you, everybody knows the startup Mexico, or startup Chile, or startup Peru, I mean, that brings entrepreneurs from the country, but what if someone from Peru wants to go to other country, or to Pacific Alliance? Do they have a finance instrument to go and say, hey, I want money to spend, to spend a while in Colombia? No, I'm sorry, this one is just Peru. So we have a problem, because I'm thinking globally, and I want to go, you know, uh, abroad. So. That is the things that we want to solve. Uh, obviously, call for proposal together. Maybe we can have a specific call for proposal for challenges by clusters. Peru and Chile, for example, in mining, Colombia in agriculture, or in other things, or maybe in coffee, whatever. We need to, we are designing you know, the first step of that. And as well, our learning community. Uh, all these uh, agencies have people that are very, uh, uh, committed with the innovation, uh, Pacific Alliance Innovation Ecosystem, so sorry. So, they want to do better their job, and of course we want to have this learning community. So what about the next step? Um, this is my final remarks. Uh, obviously we need numbers in these things, and we want to accelerate at least 20 more or less projects between 2017 and 2018 in the Pacific Alliance, using this platform, both Accelerate IP and HSM. Uh, close at least, this is the idea, five new deals with angels on AP. We need that money of these angels, all the entrepreneurs, you know, scaling out their projects. And launch, this is something like the catalog to scale up the Pacific Alliance. I mean, if you are from Colombia, Chile, Peru, or Mexico, or if you are in other of the countries and you want to go to the region, okay, where do you have to look? Where is the main information? And we are designing all those things to facilitate and to, you know, become the Pacific Alliance Innovation Ecosystem, you know, friendly user innovation ecosystem. <coughs> so, like all of you said, the time is now. We have a lot of work to do, but the time is now. Thank you very much.